we're going to be talking about a new offering in the crypto hardware wallet market from Keystone. But before getting to their latest offering, I'm just going to briefly talk a little bit about some of their previous offerings. We're going to start with the Keystone Pro that you see on screen here. It's $169. They talk about how it is a smartphone-like experience, which I kind of agree with and kind of don't. The reason is that although, yes, it has a rectangular design, it has a color touchscreen, it has a camera, it has a biometric fingerprint scanner, all parallels to modern-day smartphones, where it doesn't really have that much of a parallel to modern-day smartphones, in my opinion, is the fact that this is actually considerably smaller than the, the vast majority of modern day smartphones. This only features a four inch touchscreen, whereas most smartphones today are, I think on the small side, they'll be like 4.6 or 4.8 inches, if not five inches, even up to six, 6.2 inches. So smartphones today are considerably larger than this, number one. And number two, the reason that that makes a difference is because of the fact that it does have a touch screen, that means that when you go to key things in, you're going to be doing so with a software on screen QWERTY keyboard. And I don't know about you, you know, I don't have the biggest hands in the world, but I oftentimes have problems keying things in on the QWERTY keyboard on screen on my smartphone, which has a larger screen than this. And bear in mind, I've been a computer user, a technology user since I can remember. Literally, when I was three, four, or five years old, I was already a computer user. I have many years in professional IT experience, which is information technology, which means that I am in the computer field professionally. So the four inch screen is nice compared to other devices that are available on the market, especially at this price point. Yes, there's the Alipal Titan. However, I found some rather damning claims against the Alipal Titan when I was looking into it a couple months ago. I don't remember very many of the specifics other than one claim that I do remember was that even though it claimed to be 100% air gaps and the USB charging port was only a charging port, somebody actually took it apart. And the, the person who took it apart, I don't recall the name, I don't recall the channel. I've tried to find it in large part so that I could link it in the description here, but I've been able to find it. The person claimed to be a blockchain developer and also had knowledge of hardware. And they took apart the LPL Titan and discovered that the USB port was in fact wired so that it could transmit data. Whether it actually does or not, I don't know, but that and some other things that they pointed out that I don't really recall at the moment made me decide that I was no longer going to consider the Elopel Titan and instead replaced it entirely in that specific category at that specific price point with the Keystone Pro. So other than the large but still relatively small touchscreen issue, the other issue that we did notice with this Keystone Pro device is that the battery life is absolutely horrendous. Within something like 20 or 30 minutes, the rechargeable battery, which is pictured here, this other battery tray is actually where you can just simply insert four AAA batteries. And so you have a choice between using the rechargeable battery or this other battery sled, which allows you to use AAA batteries. The rechargeable battery within something like 25 or 30 minutes had burned through about 45 or 50 percent of its charge, which was kind of crazy. The other thing that's not awesome, in my opinion, with this device is even though it's $170, it does not come with a charging cable. It does not come with a charging adapter. It does not come with an SD card. And you must have an SD card to load the firmware before you can start using the device. Another recent offering as of just a month or two back, in fact, they, they do still offer it today day. But when you go to their website, you're not going to find the Keystone Pro or the Keystone Essential unless you either have the links or you dig around in their site or you use Google to find the Keystone Pro or the Keystone Essential on the Keystone website, which is what I did. In addition to the Keystone Pro, they also had the Keystone Essential, which is quite a bit less money. It's $119, much more reasonable. The difference between the Keystone Essential and the Keystone Pro is that the Keystone Essential does not have a biometric 
fingerprint reader. It does not come with a rechargeable battery. It also, I don't believe, has the tamper-proof security mechanism that the Keystone Pro has. That all said, another issue with these products is that I haven't been able to find a replacement battery pack of either type on their website. So if your rechargeable battery goes dead, you might actually have to buy a whole new hardware wallet rather than a 10, 20, $30 battery pack, which if true, that's a pretty big detractor. Maybe if you contact support, they'll sell you a replacement battery pack. Another relatively recent product that Keystone had available is the Keystone Ultimate. And the thing with the Keystone Ultimate is they don't really give you a ton of information on this webpage, probably because further manufacturing of it is currently pending and might become available sometime in 2023, 2024. The Keystone Ultimate has an aluminum body, a full aluminum body that utilizes unique manufacturing process to achieve maximum durability. I'm not sure what all of these components it's pictured are as unfortunately they really don't i mean this is the entire page there's no tech specs there's there's nothing and you'll notice too that the thing is 479 dollars. so hopefully it has a larger screen and some other cool features because it's quite a bit more money within just two or three weeks of me ordering the keystone pro it became known to myself and the person that I gifted the Keystone Pro to, that the Keystone 3 Pro was now coming out. Now there's also gonna be a Keystone 3, but they're not even taking pre-orders for the Keystone 3 yet, only the Keystone 3 Pro. There's some nice things about the Keystone 3 Pro. Number one, if you order it right now, it's at a 30% discount. If you are a recent customer of Keystone, you could even get a 40 or 50% discount. For example, I could order this at 50% off. The other nice thing is you'll notice that the normal price is being advertised as $129. So $10 more than the Keystone Essential and $40 less than the Keystone Pro. And here you'll see, you know, the exclusive discounts for recent Keystone customers that I mentioned. This device also boasts a three secure element security chip setup, hailing from leading global security chip manufacturers, Microchip and Maxim, these chips meet PCI security standards, guaranteeing secure and segregated digital asset storage. And of course, the hardware and software are both open source. It has a PCI anti-tamper solution, first in the industry to pioneer a PCI, which is a payment card industry security grade anti-tampering system. The SE chips are encapsulated in a complex security house. Any physical interference leads to an instant data wipe. The Keystone 3 Pro is also multi-seed phrase supported. Manage up to three unique C phrases from a single device. Effortlessly switch between wallets by inputting corresponding passwords. Which is interesting because in another part of the page, it says that you can use the biometric fingerprint scan instead of the password, which is something that we thought we would be able to do with the Keystone Pro. But as far as we can tell, you actually can't do that. You can use your finger fingerprint to unlock the device, but as soon as you want to authorize the signing of a transaction out of your wallet, you need to actually key in the password and you need to do that with the relatively small on-screen QWERTY keyboard. The other difference between the Keystone Pro and the Keystone Essential versus the Keystone 3 Pro is that the previous versions did not have USB transmission, they didn't have NFC, they didn't have Bluetooth, they were 100% air-gapped. The Keystone 3 Pro actually does allow USB transmission, which some of you may prefer. And funny enough, but also I'm glad to see that they apparently knew that the Keystone Pro and presumably the Keystone Essential had issues with the battery lifespan. The Keystone 3 Pro boasts up to 10 times longer battery life. The Keystone 3 Pro also has the biometrics verification where you can swiftly unlock and execute transactions without worrying about prying eyes 
in the public. The Keystone Pro, the Keystone Essential, I believe the Keystone Essential, and also the Keystone 3 Pro offer Shamir Backup, which is something that you can also get on a Treasure One and probably some other hardware wallets out there on the market. The Keystone 3 Pro also offers multi-signature. Users can set up multi-sig wallets with their Keystone 3, minimizing the risk of theft or scams. But be aware this feature is still in development. And of course, their comparison chart where they compare themselves to the a couple of the Ledger products and the Treasure Model T. And I believe I misspoke earlier. The Treasure Model T is the higher end device, the more expensive device that offers Shamir backup. I don't believe the Treasure Model 1 offers Shamir backup, but you'll see like down below the screen size. Keystone 3 Pro is 4 inch, whereas the Ledger Stax, which is a $280 device, is a 3.7 inch. The Ledger Nano X, which is a $150 device, is a 1.2 inch screen. And the Treasure Model T, which is a $220 device, gives you a 1.54 inch screen. And the Keystone 3 Pro does allow you to use QR code, Bluetooth, or USB. So when you actually go to Keystone's website, this is what you're going to see. You know, they're talking all about pre-orders now open for the Keystone 3 Pro, which by the way, they, again, their pre-orders, they are anticipating shipping the first units in November 2023. And actually, that's interesting. It says here that the first batch is scheduled to ship in early October with the next one to follow in November. So apparently they've already filled the first batch because when you click on buy now, First thing that it tells you is that our first batch of goods has been sold out. The estimated delivery time for the second batch is November 2023. In any case, for anybody who is interested in these features or simply interested in a relatively large screen so that you can more easily read wallet addresses rather than purely relying on the QR code. After all, if your smartphone gets some malware on it that somehow intercepts the communication between your hardware com wallet companion application on your smartphone and what you're trying to do and somehow swaps out the wallet address, it is worthwhile having a larger screen to more easily be able to read the actual wallet address, especially for people that are hard of seeing for any reason. For example, I do have a SafePal S1. The SafePal S1 has a 1.3 inch color screen, which is far smaller. However, the only time that it makes any difference to me is when I'm reading the wallet address. Currently, I can still read the wallet address, no problem. But five years from now, 10 years from now, that may no longer be the case. For anybody that's interested in a product of this type, I think that this is one of the best, if not the best product that I'm aware of that offers these features at this price point. For that reason, I think that it's very worth considering and, you know, everybody has to, you know, make their own decisions there. But you can see here the Keystone 3 Pro, which is the device that we've just been looking at. And then right next to it, they have the Keystone Pro, which we've talked about earlier. That is actually fully air gapped, whereas the Keystone 3 Pro is not fully air gapped because it has Bluetooth connectivity and it also has USB connectivity. Doesn't have plug for an RG. J45 network cable, and it doesn't have Wi-Fi communication, doesn't have infrared communication, or at least standard IR communication, but it does have Bluetooth and it does have USB. You don't have to use the Bluetooth or the USB, in which case I would suggest you turn off the Bluetooth. And in fact, anytime you have a hardware device that has that type of connectivity, whether it's NFC, IR, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, any of that, anytime you're not using it, make sure to turn those features off if you can. Number one. Number two, make sure to power down the device when you're not using it. And number three, I would invest in a RF blocking box or package to store this in just in case.